Inauguration Day for President Elpidio Quirino and Vice President Fernando Lopez, newly elected to lead the country for the next four years. A cloudless sky greeted the distinguished guests who filled the grandstand on the Luneta to overflowing, as well as the thousands upon thousands who swarmed across the Luneta to witness the inaugural ceremonies and hear the chief executive in his inaugural address. Distinguished members of the foreign embassy, family wives, and consular officials were present in large numbers. Members of the Philippine Armed Forces and their wives, leaders of the government, cabinet members, the Supreme Court, senators, congressmen, provincial governors, bureau chiefs, and large provincial delegations, as well as leaders of the Philippine industry. Smiles were large in all faces as the arrival of the newly elected leaders was awaited. The charming first lady of the land, Miss Vicky Quirino, daughter of the president, arrived in the company of the widow of the late President Manuel Rojas, Anya Trini, and were greeted by Justice Moran and Speaker Perez of the House. Myron Cowan with Mrs. Cowan and daughter Sandra arrived shortly before the ceremonies took place. And two, Vice Admiral Olds, the commander of the U.S. Naval Forces here with his family. And the last of the distinguished guests to arrive, Senate President Mariano Jesus Cuenco. Three of the country's most prominent men, Justice Manuel Moran, Senate President Cuenco, and Speaker Laos Perez, gathered for a last-minute powwow shortly before the arrival of Fernando Lopez, the newly elected Vice President who mounted to the grandstand with his attractive wife, a bit seriously exchanging greetings with those already seated, awaiting the arrival of President Quirino for the oath-taking and signing. <laughs> Stand, a very serious moment in the ceremonies came as President Quirino reviewed the Presidential Guard and the playing of the National Anthem. review the military parade which preceded the inaugural ceremonies. Yes, a parade of the military might of the Philippines, headed by General Mariano Castaneda and his staff, followed the arrival of the president. The president seated himself with his cabinet and waited for the arrival of the first of the military parade, the Air Force.
amassing an impressive array. Ben McCullough, one of our composed and members of the Air Force, the Armed Forces of the Army, and the Philippine Naval Patrol. administered the oath of office and witnessed the signing of the oath by both the president and vice president. I, of having been elected and proclaimed president of the Philippines, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and conscientiously fulfill my duty. The President signed his oath with a special gold fountain pen presented to him by a group of admirers from his home province. And then, the following the signing by the President, and feeling the weight of his new office, Vice President-elect Fernando Lopez stepped to the rostrum before Justice Moran to take his oath. From Mayor of Iloilo, the Senator, and then the Vice Presidency, Fernando Lopez's rise in politics has been one of the most astonishing in Philippine history. As a Senator, he sponsored many measures for the benefit of labor and Social Security for the common man. And now the inaugural address by His Excellency the President. My fellow countrymen, the Republic of the Philippines was born in the shadow of a world war. Nurtured in democracy and reared in the midst of human anguish, it will exclude the crushing impact of a major catastrophe from which every nation is still seeking recovery to this day. Despite its infancy, it has played a respected role in the name and the universal peace and security, I place myself and my administration at the service of all the people without distinction as to greed, class or station, and pledge my whole effort to the protection of the fundamental rights, the improvement of the livelihood, and the defense of the free President Chirino and Vice President Lopez, Madhu Hai. 